Well, hello, hello. This is Rose Arts Your Creators. How are you doing? How's it going? I'm bringing you today a cookie recipe. I already kind of sort of started it to save on time. I'm really hoping I stay within my 15 minute time frame. I'm going to be making a using my Betty Crocker cookbook. And I'm using my Timo Haw. I'll put a video link on that one. Of my recipe book holder so I can see it and I get my book dirty and I like that little uh, recipe book holder because it's got three different levels so depending on what your height and your eyesight <coughs> now this one is a versatile cookie mix which basically it's a basic cookie mix then you can add to it and what you can do is you store this it says here, place, uh, you put, put all this once you've mixed it all up, okay, and you put it in the refrigerator no longer than 10 weeks. So that's one, two, that's almost two and a half months, okay, which is more than enough for most people to get through their cookie mix. And I made, I've been, I'm making just one batch because I want to see how long it'll hold for us. So this way, uh, when I'm ready, all I got to do is pop them out get my cookie scooper and pop them on the cookie sheet and their cookie sheet and they're ready to bake and then we're done so what the recipe calls for is four cups of all-purpose flour or you can use whole wheat flour one and a half cups of granulated sugar one and a half cups of packed brown sugar three teaspoons of baking powder one and a half teaspoons of salt and one and a half teaspoons of shortening I already mixed I'm um, this is me Rosa you do you do your own research but this is what I do I went ahead and mixed my sugar and my flour. It was really well incorporated. Then I added my uh, brown sugar, the salt, and we used the pink Himalayan salt. And I make a big batch and I stick it in here. And this is also my little lids for my mason jars. So I can save my metal rings and uh, lids for uh, canning projects. Okay, so I've got everything in here. And so I'm going to mix this all up. Shouldn't take too long. And I'm using my little double scoop. Because I'll be able to scrape the bowl with my little scraper on this end. Oh, excuse me. I got a nosy, it, itchy nose. And then I'm just going to mix this up. As you can see. Yeah, you're in frame. So. I do like this little uh, silicone spoon. It is a little on the flimsy side on the end. But there's a hard thing here to hold it with. So I'm able to do control, I am able to control it. But it's mainly, I'm using this mainly for mixing. And don't forget, when you mix, go all the way down to the center and roll it around. Oops. Oh, that was a baby little mess, but it was still a little mess. <laughs> one day, one day soon, hopefully, I'll have a video of me making something and not have a big spill. <laughs> okay. So, ah, well, there's another one. <laughs> now, make sure you've got clean hands. You know your brown sugar, it's after a while, because I make my own brown sugar, and even if you didn't, you had store bought one, it gets little clumpies. And so I'm just make, I'm just using my fingers, and I'm smoothing out all the little clumps, because you don't want to bite into a big old chunk of brown sugar. So now I'm just making sure there was a big clump right there. Got all the clumps are done. Alrighty. And I think, um, whoop, there's some more right there. I see that. And you'll see it in person. You don't really see it very well in the video. So I'm not going to bother to stop and show you. I'm just basically letting the clumps. I've got my oven preheating because I'm going to be making peanut butter cookies today with this versatile cookie recipe. Uh, and you can either, it says you can make banana cookies, peanut butter cookies, or spice cookies. But pretty much you can add anything you want to it. All you're doing is adding the main ingredient to the mix once it's all mixed up and put together. Okay. So I think we're good. All the clumps of the round sugar. I think are gone and I've, I've got down to the center 
and I'm picking it up. So we're good. I think we're good to go. And now it asks to cut in, and cut in means we're shortening. And I'm using my Crisco shortening. And it asks for one and a, one and a half cups of shortening. I hope I have enough here. I think I have one more jar, but I'm not for sure. Since I don't bake that often, because we're you know we're on a weight loss program. But uh, you know, I was just in the mood for a cookie. I just been wanting cookies for the last three or four days, and I'm just gonna make some. However long they last is however long they last. And since I saw this recipe about being versatile, so I could make a big batch like I'm doing here. It's just a single batch. I didn't double batch it because it's just me and honey. So I'll just, I'll just make probably like six or eight for us for today. And that for us to have today, then I have a little snack tomorrow. And I'll put the rest in the fridge and make another batch of cookies of a different kind. Okay, I don't think I'm going to have enough. Nope, I'm not going to have enough of this. I'm hoping I have another jar of this Crisco. Because it does say shortening, but what I'm going to do is just to show you. I'm a little bit low, so I need to go in and find it, but I'm not going to do that. I'll do that off camera. Oop. So I need to put this in here. I'm just a little shy of the whole cup, but that's okay. I'll do. I'll add it when I get my other half a cup, and I'll do that off camera. You can use your hand. You can use your fingers. Or you can use a little pastry thing if you want to. But I'm just going to use my hand. <coughs> oh, excuse me. All you're doing is you're working the shortening into the flour, the whole mix. That's what they call cutting in the lard, the shortening the lard. I don't know if that's the right terminology or not, but that's what I've always been told. And that's what I've always heard from my grandparents and my aunts and uncles. And all you're doing is incorporating the entire mix with the shortening. And because of the shortening, this is why it needs to be refrigerated. Okay. But, you know, for me, 10 weeks, I think... My oven, my little oven thing is ready, so it's ready to roll. I should have waited until I got, because I still got to put it all together and then roll them up before I turn the oven off on. I'm just so used to you turn the oven on to preheat, so it's usually by the time the recipe is ready, the oven's ready. Okay, so I'm gonna need to go get some more sugar, but basically, as you can see. That's what you do get when you're cutting in the lard, and it crumbles for all the little pieces. Like here's a little piece right there, and you're done. So now I'm just gonna go ahead. I'm gonna take you off camera. I'll bring you back when. Uh, all, Cause all I gotta do is get the other thing of lard, put it in there, and then I'm gonna do the peanut butter one. So I'm gonna get two cups of this mix. Once I get the lard, it's all mixed up. I'm gonna get two cups of this mix. Get another bowl. And then I'm going to add one half cup of crunchy peanut butter, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to add the last of my peanut butter powder because this stuff is really good. So I'm going to add my peanut butter powder, one egg, one vanilla, mix it all up, put it on the cookie sheet. Uh, and uh, I'm, I like to use a cookie scooper because it just makes it easy. Then I'm going to get my fork and I'm going to press down on the around the uh, cookie and make a shape of the little design for a regular peanut butter cookie. So we'll bring it back when we come to that next phase. Alrighty, we're back. I'm sorry, but I forgot to turn the recorder on, the camera on, when I was rolling in the, the dough. These cookies I didn't press, because this is going to be me and hubby. We're not too, we don't really care about the looks, but I do want to show you how we use the fork, like it said, and see the impression on the cookies. I literally just got them out of the oven. Turn my oven on. Off. And then here's the plain Jane ones. Which I'm okay with them being that way. Now it said it was supposed to make two dozen. Three, six, nine, fifteen, sixteen, eight, nine, 
32 so that's pretty accurate now they are little bitty bite-sized cookies this one I don't know what happened but it fell apart so I'm wondering if they're done well they're toasty on the bottom but I don't know they're supposed to fall apart are they moist are they supposed to be hard I'm gonna wait a few minutes but let's do a quick little taste test they're good I'm gonna wait and let them cool because I literally just got them out of the oven and I will post a picture at the very end but I think this recipe is a good thumbs up and this is the leftover mix I was I had to find two containers that would fit in my fridge in the garage so I went ahead and labeled it both of them so we have enough cookie mix for another day which is going to be done in half the time actually less than half the time so anyway thank you so much for watching we'll catch you in the next video bye bye i hope i stay within my 15 minute time frame <laughs> give me a thumbs up bye bye